Um, Alright, module 3, briefly describe two advantages of a client server network. A client server network is um client server. Everything is managed by one central server. Right. Yeah. Everything is managed by one central server. So that makes it easy to maintain updates to computers, example antivirus updates, and two, it makes it easy to share files, share files and resources from the server, example shared folders slash shared folders and not by shared folders and printers. I'd explain what is meant by the firewall. Um, a hardware or software device that filters unwanted packets from entering or leaving a network. Explain why firewall software needs to be frequently updated because there are bad people out there. There are new threats that come out daily so the system must be updated in order to handle them properly all right state two differences between fddi and ethernet architectures all right fddi has fiber fiber distributed let me stop again by fiber distributed something interchange is interchange and fiber networks uh interface. Is interface? yeah yeah so fiber networks have a have a double ring loop back fail see ethernet does not <laughs> does not have one yeah that's basically what pretty much briefly explain the role of the network and transport layers in the osi network model all right network this tcp ip basically transport all right so network is an ip address is assigned to the packet so that a router can direct them properly transport layer the packets are organized and reconstructed once once delivered to their destination by tcp it's always help to give the name drop if you give the name drop your life will be a lot easier you could say that Outline three reasons why many users may prefer wireless routers over wired routers. Why do you prefer Wi-Fi? One, you can walk all over. Um, was it was it really looking for? Flexibility. Was that flexibility to go wherever, wherever you want to? Portable devices are nicer <laughs> for more convenient, more convenient. And three. Uh, no wires to install no wires to install no unsightly wires yeah no unsightly wires that's why you'll end up having a portless iphone because wires are unsightly explain the purpose of gprs gprs is to provide um, mobile devices with internet access so they can communicate with other devices i guess yeah, yeah. Mobile devices with wireless. Yeah, I had to mention the word wireless inside. Here. Name and describe two applications of GPRS. Well, well, well. What do you use data on your phone for? Instant messaging. This is not GPS. GPR. Instant messaging and mobile browsing. Anything else? No. Nope. Not really, that should be okay. Alright, let's go carefully explain what is the role of a device drive and an operating system. It acts as a translator between the device and the operating system, ensuring that the commands from the OS are understood by the device. I've seen the same thing twice. Yeah, I'm too short to get three marks there. Wait, let me see what they say. A device driver essentially converts the more general input-output instructions of the operating system to messages that the device can understand. Yeah, that's basically what we said there. Translator between the device and the operating system ensuring that the commands on the device are understood. Yeah, we can't get back to you for that. Jeff received a message on his computer. Document is currently spooling. Explain it to him spooling. Um, spooling is... Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Spooling is the use of a buffer to temporarily hold the document that 
is being printed and sending the information to the printer in small bursts. Yeah, we we'll take that. Small bursts. All right, outline two advantages of a menu interface over a command interface. All right, advantage one menu gives predefined choices so there is no need to remember commands to what else good about menu boy menu doesn't have typographical errors it avoids typographical errors because all the choices have, have been defined correctly unless you have a unless you have a typo if you have a typo that's that's kind of tragic but you know We'll make it do, 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 do. briefly describe two components of a process control block when the operating process now. Process control block has real things in it. Uh, let's think of any two process state. Easy process state will be check to see if the process is currently running, ready, or waiting. Then you have um uh, priority. What um what position it has in the queue now scratch priority priority is not a good one priority hard to explain let's put something easy like um register information a program counter program counter yes yes keeps track of the next instruction to be executed yeah program counter never fail yeah pointer pointer is one two as normally remember the three p's but i can remember them not that point in time memory i just register so no yeah no, not that. Memory allocation. But, uh, Something so. Yeah. Alright, besides passwords, explain two other ways in which files can be protected from unauthorized access. Alright, we have our good friend encryption, which is scrambling the data using a an algorithm known by the sender and receiver and then you have um access control list states who can view edit and update no view and edit files i think it's view and edit yeah view and edit files encryption access control list they say besides passwords right there then you the only other one if it says um usernames and user ids yeah yeah user ids and passwords okay Explain how processes can be scheduled in round robin. Um, each process is given a quantum, aka time. When when the time has elapsed, the running process is preempted. It'd be nice for you to say that word. It's preempted, and the waiting process gets to run base run for a specified time run for a specified time okay explain how an interrupt is handled by the processor in a computer there are two ways you can handle an interrupt you can handle it by polling or by arm yeah you can handle it by polling or what's the next one by polling or directly but anyhow it's by the processor so we're not we're not talking about polling we're talking about how the processor okay um the interrupt is sent as a process to the cpu the interrupt is sent as a process to the cpu um so the cpu gets the next thing because it's four marks the cpu saves the state of the current process and puts it in the ready queue the interrupt is processed to completion and then we would hope that the previous process is allowed to continue. Yep, that would be the four marks there. 